let's get back to the corsets. I've never done talking about corsets. Corsetry is something that comes back in the round every single time I sit in front of the camera just because it's a controversial topic. People like it, I like it. Uh, let's jump into it. Corsets. Movie corsets. Have you ever watched a movie and been like, that does not look right? Ever since I was interested in, in fashion history and history of fashion, I can't watch movies anymore because because anytime something inaccurate happens, I'm like, nah. And apparently corsets are something that are really hard to get right. So a lot of the time I watch a movie and all of the costumes are stunning and then it comes to the underwear and for some reason the costume designers or the directors are like, you know what, let's make it what we want it to be, not what the period dictates. So today I thought I'm gonna rate movie corset on a scale of one to an actual Victorian corset. <laughs> For the record, I'm going to talk about corsetry in movies rather than TV. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to refer to 18th century and earlier states or pairs of bodies as corsets because it just makes sense. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do a separate stay video because no one's gonna click the title because they won't know what it means, so... I couldn't, for, for some reason, I couldn't remember any movie with a corset in it. Like, I only got like two, so I asked you guys on Instagram, some of you helped out. Most of you pointed Pirates of the Caribbean, which was not super helpful. Uh, some of you pointed Titanic, and that was 99% of the answers, so thank you. For real, though, some of you suggested some movies that I didn't think about, so thank you for that. So let's let's start roasting people's work. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with the ultimate corset scene, which is the, the corset tightening scene in Gone with the Wind. And there is also the scene where they're going to nap in their corsets, because apparently that's what every Victorian young woman did back then. So Gone with the Wind corsets are kind of the reflection of what the actual costumes are, which is a modernized 19. 30s, 1940s version of 1860s fashion. At that time, they weren't really going for like historical accuracy, they were going for the look, which is why a lot of the cuts pattern seams are placed the way they would be in 1940s clothing. And similarly, the corsets reflect the corset refashion at the time. While women did not wear corsets on a daily basis, they definitely did wear them for like fashion photo shoots or under the structured gowns of the time, so the corsets sort of reflect that. The main characteristic of a corset like that is that it's kind of conical in a way. There is this hourglass type shape when you look at the side and contrary to a Victorian corset which would be more smooth the lines would be kind of flowing instead of being like super geometrical so this is how you can tell the corset is not super accurate because it doesn't follow the original line so the Gone with the Wind corset I'm still glad they showed corsetry but A I think most of them are underbusts, which were not fashionable at the time. 1860s corsets were mostly mid-busts, so they would push your boobs up and they would kind of cut them in half. Whereas the Gone with the Wind corsets look like underbusts to me, which is not super period appropriate. They would get a six, but because the tight lacing seam is so annoyingly inaccurate and it has stained people's memory and perception of corsets so much, I'm gonna give it a five. The scene where had McDaniel is tight lacing Vivian, Vivian Lee is just inaccurate like you wouldn't have to do it like that I don't know where this trope came from because a lot of these movie scenes that I'm gonna talk about featured this trope where a lady is being tight laced by her maid or a friend and they always do it the wrong way in the movies they push it like backwards which doesn't do anything it doesn't tighten the corset it just kind of pushes the person back so I have no idea why they keep doing this because it honestly my kitty is currently probably having a mental breakdown from the looks of it. Are you okay? So a five. It's a five. Five corsets out of ten. <laughs> Amadeus. What in the Amadeus is going on? There is this scene where, where the train is coming by the window. There is this scene where we see one of the main characters undressed and I don't know what the ever-loving heck is going on, but that's not an 18th century corset. Why the hell does she have cups in in like mid or late 18th century states? Even if it was supposed to be like transitional states of 1780s, 1790s, it would not look like that, believe me. When it comes to historical accuracy, this one is unarguably one of the worst... I'm gonna have to close the window. One of the worst corsets slash stays 
in movie history. And the saddest thing is that the costumes in this movie got an Oscar, so... Titanic! There is a corset lacing scene in Titanic. Of course, it has to be a corset lacing scene because that's the only context that we see corsets in. It's not bad. The length and the cut and the shape is okay. I'm a little hesitant about giving it higher than a 7 because the cups seem off to me. Like, they're really pretty high and the overall shape is not what you see on photographs, which to me means that it's been slightly modernized. But again, it's quite a good corset, it's the right length, it's right for the period, which is really important as well, so... I'd give it a solid 7. 7 corsets. Jane Eyre, my personal favorite. I'm talking about a 2013 one. Whenever I'm talking about something that, that has been adapted like 10 times, I'm usually talking about the newest version because the chances that you guys have seen it are higher if it's new. As sad as it sounds. So Jane Eyre from 2013. One of my favorite period dramas costume-wise and otherwise. There's a s short snippet of corset when she gets out of her wedding dress and she's in her room and you can see that it's sort of this transitional period bef between the Regency style stays and actual solid bone corsets of the 1840s, 1850s. It was kind of a messy time corset wise. I'd say it could be more rusty, like it seems brand new, but that's just picking on stuff. I'd give it a solid 8 and that's not because that's one of my favorite movies. Another suggestion that a lot of you made, as I mentioned, was the Pirates of the Caribbean and the famous corset slash fainting scene. I actually forgot that there is also this scene where she's obviously being laced in a corset and it's of course too tight for her. So the stays themselves look okay to me. They are being laced in a spiral way, which is also period appropriate, so that's good. It's the way they're portrayed that it worries me a little bit, but again, I'm rating corsets, not movies, or not the context that they were placed in, so corset-wise, I'd say it's a beautiful specimen. It could be too late for the period because she's wearing pre-1770s gowns and the boning on the corset suggests it's like 1770s or later. So for this minor misdating or like or like anachronism, I would give it an 8 out of 10. I don't know. Yeah, it seems right. Speaking of... Kira Knightley, um, Anna Karenina featured some nice corsets. There was a yellow corset that is okay. The shape isn't fantastic, but it features those bust gores that seem nice and I think hip gores as well, but overall it could be better. There was also a beige corset that she was wearing while she was being dressed. And something odd is happening with the lacing, like the lacing in a well-made corset fitted to your body should be parallel. If it's wider at the bottom, it means the corset is too small at the bottom. So that's what's happening here. And I'm not sure if it hasn't been laced properly or, or if the actress's measurements changed or something, but something went off here. But like the overall shapes and patterns of the corsets are nice, so I would give them like a 7 out of 10 perhaps, because like they're well made and the design is great, but the actual shape of the corset is not what I would expect from 1870s corsetry. Phantom of the Opera. There are several corsets appearing in that movie and I'm sorry to say none of them is correct. <laughs> they look kind of 2000s to me, which is when the film was made, so it absolutely makes sense, but they just look really modern. Most of them don't even feature a front busk, which was kind of like canon at the time. The shape of the corsets has nothing to do with what women wore back then. The fabric is kind of off and apart from the fact that they used corsets, which I guess is a positive, the movie is set in 1870, so... Uh -uh. So I say accuracy wise, it's like a 4 because it's a corset and it fits her. <laughs> Stays in Marie Antoinette are pretty much okay, I guess. They could be more detailed, like sometimes you see a pair of stays that are just so crispy, like the boning channels are tiny, the seams are tiny, the stitches are tiny, the bias tape is tiny, like everything you see 
looks like it could have been made in 18th century. With Marie Antoinette's stays, I feel like I don't get that feeling for some reason. Not to mention that some of the dresses seem to have this really odd silhouette where the stays are kind of longer than they're supposed to be. I don't know. There is just something a bit off, so I wouldn't say they're like perfect, but they're... I guess they're like a solid seven. The stays in Dangerous Liaisons get an extra point for pushing the boobs properly. Because like a lot of these actresses that I've mentioned before, the stays are just like keeping stuff in place, whereas in Dangerously is... The boobs are like, they're just pushed just where they're supposed to be, which is why they get an extra point, so they would get an 8, I guess. Young Victoria happens again at this weird transitional period between stays and corsetry, and I think it, it has it right, like it sticks to stays which were actually popular until like 1850s, so this is right for the period. The stays that were worn were not usually different colors, like most of the time they were like white, off-white, beige, they weren't like heavily decorated on like corsets lately, sometimes were, so I guess it's period appropriate. Maybe for Queen Victoria you would expect the underwear to be more lavish, but then I don't think we have seen Queen Victoria's underwear, so it fits her nicely, it gives her a nice silhouette. I'd say it's an 8, mainly because it's not super innovative. innovative? Now, Meet Me in St. Louis is a 1944, I think, movie that is set in Edwardian era and I must admit that corsetry is a little bit better than Gone in the Wind, mainly because of all the fluffy decoration and lace and it just seems more Edwardian appropriate than the supposedly Victorian corsets of the Gone with the Wind. But of course, the only context that they appear in is being super tight laced and pushed back by a friend or sister, I can't remember, while wearing a corset, so the shape is not super Edwardian. Again, it's closer to what 1940s silhouette was like, which is more conical, in contrast to like the more soft lines of an Edwardian corset ring. For example, the hips, Edwardian corsets accentuated hips a lot and they gave them this soft sort of curvy appeal, whereas the corsets in, in Meet Me in St. Louis are just there. They're not doing anything to the hips, they're not doing anything to the, to the bust, they're mostly there to cinch the waist in and they're also not doing that greatly, so I think aesthetically speaking they're quite nice, which is why I would give them like a 7, but not anything more than that, mainly because they don't serve the purpose, like they're not doing much. Now there are several corsets in The Prestige, none of them has anything to do with Victorian or Edwardian corsets. While the costuming in the movie is actually not that bad, the person that wears corsets the most in that movie, which is Scarlett Johansson's character, I can't remember her name, she is supposed to be like the showgirl and I think it's a really a missed opportunity of showing off the actual showgirl look of like late 19th century because it was a look, like it's just so cool. You know, you had those short skirts and stockings and actual cool showy flashy corsets. I don't know, it's just a lot to work with and instead they decided to go for like a modernized version of that, which is not great. So instead they had her looking kind of like your typical saloon girl without a chemise underneath because why would you protect your body against the boning or lacing? And then she's not wearing skirts or anything, just sort of like drapey bustle like material which again gives those like saloon girl vibes and she's also wearing like see-through stockings which didn't exist at the time. None of the corsets does its job, none of it looks period. I think some of them feature cups for her bust which again why? I was kind of disappointed because I remember watching it going like, oh, we have a showgirl slash actress character. A lot of outfits at the time really rocked and looked super cool and it's a chance for some really nice underwear peak, whereas they just went for this look and I was like, wow, another default sexy girl costume. I'm sorry, the prestige, that's gonna be like 
F4. An interesting example of corsetry is featured in The Piano by Jane Campion. Again, it's kind of a transitional period, like hair, hair, and accessories, and the dress suggests it's sort of 1850s, but then she's also wearing a cage crinoline, which was only patented in 1856. So overall, it gives off this like 1850s vibes, which is when the corset restarted being the thing. Like before that, they, they were there were different types of stays, etc and they were much softer but around 1840s 1850s things started changing shifting a lot more steel and whalebone started being featured in those types of stay slash corsets so she is i'm not sure about other corsets in the movie but i have this picture of her in a striped corset which i think looks, looks super cool because that was also the time when people started experimenting with like different fabrics and patterns and um, colors especially. There's a lot of vibrant vibrant colored corsets in 1850s so I think that kind of shows it off a little bit like the corset doesn't always have to be white to pass as an authentic Victorian corset and it fits with the overall like goth appeal of the movie which is mostly like she's always wearing black it's all gloomy and wet even though the shape of it is not super great like the bust is super flat I don't know why but still it kind of like a lot of the photographs from the era feature ladies bust being completely like flattened down to fit the dress so I guess that's the look they were going for and in, a, in that case it is historically accurate so I'm gonna give it like an eight and a half. So the last movie I wanted to address is The Picnic at Hanging Rock which is a cool movie, it's a great movie and I don't think any remake is gonna get the atmosphere right as, as it did in 1970s but again imagine what kind of scene are we getting in a movie about girls girls in corsets, lacing girls in corsets so again we have this like super tight and you can't breathe in corset retrope and all of the corsets are white which I think is accurate but is it that likely that a group of girls have corsets in the very same shade of white. Some of them would obviously be like off-white, some of them would probably be less new looking than the others and here we just... I feel like we have a set of identical corsets and also the shape is not doing much. It's, it's an a six. <laughs> so there's a lot of other films that feature corsets that I can't remember right now or I won't talk about because they're not um, movies, they're just TV shows or something. Mainly my problem with all of the corsetry in the movies is that it's not shaping the body enough. And I'm not saying like, oh, so we have to like literally cinch the waist of the actress so much that she can't breathe and make her look good. No, I'm just saying, if modern corset makers can make you a corset that gives you the silhouette and the shape and it fits you and it's not super tight, that means you can do it as well. There is a lot of things you can do. There is padding, there is specific cuts that actually shape your body and I feel like the corsets made in the movies are not actually made by corset makers they they're made by costumers and maybe that's why they're not like super curvy <laughs> most of the time the actresses just look like they're wearing sort of tubes and that's not what corsets did they actually gave you that shape that silhouette we're all looking for when when we're watching period dramas like we don't want people to look modern we just want to see you know something that we can't see in our day-to-day -day lives so if costume designers could do that, that would be great. I think none of the examples I mentioned today actually gave the actresses the right silhouette. Even the ones that were like eight and a half or nine, most of them looked good, were well made, but they didn't achieve what they were supposed to achieve. And I think that tells you something about how fast the film industry works and how little time there is for actual fittings and stuff because you can't spend months on altering the corset to fit your actress so she looks like a Victorian goddess. Like, I get that. That being said, I would watch the hell out of that. <laughs> if you know any examples of corsetry in movies done right, please let me know because I, I can't think of anything from the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure at least a couple of times in my life I watched something and I was like, she looks like like a fashion plate. She looks exactly like she's supposed to look. So let me out and see you.